Hi folks, David Creative Craft House to show you another product that originated from the great mind of John Napier, a Scottish mathematician from the late 1500s, early 1600s. Uh, we do his Napier's Bones and uh, it's a very nice set. Uh, and this is something here called Napier's Local, Local Arithmetic Board. It has a few other names I think and it was suggested by Richard Blake uh, of Scotland. And it's the kind of thing that, you know, there's probably 11 people in the world that might be interested in owning one, but I'm one of them, so here we go. Uh, I had fun making it. Um, it's, it will do multiplication in a very interesting way. Um, it breaks numbers down into base 2 and then uh, moves them accordingly. And I'm going to try to show you how it works. Uh, but first of all, let me explain what we've got here. This, this set that is... Uh, it's about uh, 9 inches by 7 inches. Uh, I did make a cover for it. This will come over the top and protect everything. Um, if you see one of these, I don't know the name was ever made one, but you can see pad find patterns that uh, sometimes you can use on a chessboard with discs. Um, I, I, I thought that would be just too, just too big, cumbersome, and so I decided to use pegs, and I use these very nice little cribbage pegs. It allows the board to be reduced in size and also gives it stability. Uh, the pegs tend to move around. Uh, and it's really very, very uh, functional and ergonomically sound, I think. Okay, uh, let's suppose that we wanted to multiply the numbers 24 times 36. Now, this row on the far right and this row on the bottom here um, are going to be rows that contain our two factors, 24 and 36. So, uh, what we need to do is break down 24 into a base 2 number. Now, you, you really don't have, have to understand base 2 to order to do this, but by the time you're done, you're, you probably will. Uh, base two, 2 works on groups of 1s, 2s, 4s, 8s, 16s, 32s, 64s, 128s, and so forth. It just keeps doubling, starting with the number 1. Similarly, base 10 is 1s, 10s, 100s, everything multiplies by 10. Computers use base 2. The switches are either on, it's a 1, or off, that's a 0. And everything can be represented by a series of 1s and zeros. If I take the number 24, uh, to, in order to represent it in base 2, what I'm going to do is, looking on this far right row, what is the largest number that will not exceed 24? Well, it's a 16, so I'm going to put a peg in that hole. 16 from 24 is 8. What is the largest number to get to 8? Well, there is an 8, so I'm going to put a peg there. So 16, uh, 24 is 16 plus 8, or in base 2 it's 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. 0 because there's no pegs there. Just a hole. Works out well. Now let's go to 36. 36 I can come coming across here. Uh, the biggest number I can find that doesn't exceed 36 is 32. Subtracting 32, I get 4. And there is a 4 here, so that'll work. And, um, oops, the bottom row where it belongs. So 36 is 32 plus 4. That is, there's one group of 32, no groups of 16, no groups of 8, one group of 4, no group of 2, and no group of 1. All right, now I have my factors in position. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take the pegs and find the intersection of the rows in the column. In other words, um, this column intersects that row here and here. And here and here. Okay, there's my intersection points. Now the final step is to take these intersecting points and move them diagonally all the way down to the bottom left. So if I start with this one here on the 32, I'll just follow my 32 pass down to here, the 64 pass down to here, the 256 pass down to here, and the 512 pass down to here. When they land down here, my next task is to add these up. So 24 times 36 is the sum of 512 plus 256, plus 64, plus 32, or 
14, carry the 1, 11, 12, 15, carry the 1, 8, 54. And if I did my math right, um, that should be correct. Now, uh, you will run into situations, this is a very straightforward situation, but you will run into situations where there may be some, some conflicts as you move the pegs to the lower left. And let me try to set something up for that. Let's suppose we're doing um, uh, 20, uh, let's say 6 times 52, just for the hell of it. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> so we're going to go through the same procedure. 26 would be, I'd have to have a 16, and 8 is 24. And two more would make 26. Okay, I've set this up and we've zoomed in a little bit. Perhaps you can see better uh, for the problem 26 times 52. Okay, let's start here on the upper left. And if we take this peg and move diagonally, we end up down there. Now if I take this peg and start to move diagonally, ooh, I run into another peg on this 256. I've got two pegs on 256. Whenever this happens, what you do, I've got two 256s, kind of makes sense. I'm going to take one of them out and move to the left and disregard this one here. So I've got now got a peg on 512. I can move that one down too, but when I get to the bottom, I run into the peg we just left at 512. I've got two pegs at 512, and that's okay. What do I do? Remove one of them and move, remove one of them, pull the other one to the left. So now it's on 1024. Makes sense. 2, 5, 12 is 10, 24. Now let's continue that process. I can come down here to 128, move that down. I can come here to 64 and move that down, but I run into a peg at 64. No problem. 264, two, two 64s. Remove one, take the other one, shift it to the left. The 32, run into a 32. No problem. Shift it to the left, remove this one. Um, the 64 comes down. If I take the one, this 128 down, I run into that. So I get two 128s, no problem. Shift to the left, remove that, and the 8 comes down. Now I've got everything uh, on the bottom row lined across. So this is saying that 26 times 52 is equal to 1024 plus 256 plus 64 plus 8. If that's correct. If I add these up, I get 22, 7, 9, I guess 9 and 6 is 15. Here are the 1, 3, 152. So I hope I did my math right, but this says 26 times 52 is 1,352. Now you are somewhat limited. You can't do huge numbers. Uh, the biggest you can do is if all these pegs were filled, you have 128 times 2 minus 1, you have 511 times 511. Now you'll notice that the, the bottom factor row stops here at 128. That's because if we continue, you could end up with the results that would be outside the scope of what this could add up. Uh, I believe it would do 511 times 511, uh, which is be almost twice, 32768 3, 3, times 2 minus 1. So you do about 65,000. As long as the sum is less than 65,000, you should should be okay. And as long as each of the numbers is less than 255 or less. But it's very interesting. It you know, demonstrates some interesting math principles. Um, John Napier was uh, way ahead of his time. Um, if you're interested in Napier's bones, um, which do... Um, uh, it, it approach this problem in a little bit different way, multiplication in a little bit different way, uh, we do offer those. We all, I also make the Janai Lucas rods, which um, although Napier's work was good for 300 years about, uh, Janai rods improved on that in the late 1800s, and later slide rules improved on that, and of course we all know what calculators and computers did. All right, um, I hope this is something you can enjoy. I may vary the woods a bit. This, um, this happens to be alder. It's got a beautiful, um, very effective uh, floorboard base to it, gives it a rigidity, um, and of course we've got this cover. This cover will come over the top. Uh, you have a bunch of pegs. I'm not sure exactly how many, but whatever fits in there, uh, which should be adequate for uh, most multiplications, uh, roughly 36 or 40 pegs, whatever fits in the slot. 
Okay, and I made the color of the pegs may vary also. Made right here in our Hudson, Florida shop, and I hope it's something you can enjoy.